Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I'm out on another walk. Today, I'm walking from the Jack and Jill windmills above Clayton Hill, just uh, north of Brighton, on the South Downs, on the South Downs Way, and they are just behind me here. Um, I've made a video about uh, the Jill windmill, uh, I think it was last year or the year before actually, beautiful freshly restored post mill here. Jack is a tower mill and it's in private hands and you can't go in it, but Jill you can. Um, and we've got the wonderful view uh, going north of the Downs, but I'm not going that way. We're going eastwards towards um, Ditchling Beacon. That is the plan of the walk today. This is a very popular place. People come up here, they park their dogs, they go and visit the uh, the windmill which is just up there. I don't know if it's open today, it's usually open on a Sunday I think, um, but we're going to go and follow the South Downs way up this track here. I'm hoping, because we have a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of cloud, that we get some reasonable views on this route. So we'll just stroll up this bit first of all and make our way. I'm not quite sure how many miles it is. I think it's about two miles along the track to Ditchling Beacon. We are actually sort of, if you were to go south, you'd come to Ditchling um, about a mile or so in the north from the hill. We're just coming up to the, uh, the jack here, which is just behind me up there. We haven't got time to have a look at that, I'm afraid. Uh, well, plus the fact it's on private land. We're going to stretch our legs and there's a bit of a cool wind but nonetheless I think if we keep walking we'll keep warm. So where I've parked actually is on a on a bridle way and it meets the South Downs way just here and if you go this way it'll take you west and you go over these rather fabulous undulating chalky hills there but if we carry on up this way we're now going east and that's where I'm going. We're on the high ridge here the South Downs Way tends to just sit right on the very top an ancient track going along the east and west of the South Downs 100 miles or so I'm not doing anything like that. I need to do more of the South Downs way in little bits probably to make it work. On the other side of this field we see some sheep having a, a nice little gnaw at the, at the grass. It's lovely that we have a little bit of sunshine on our trip today because the weather has been so bleak this winter, just wet and rain and quite horrible. Very little colour in January when I'm filming, you've got the grass that's green, you've got the gorse, there is a little yellow on the, gr on the gorse which is nice, it gives us a little bit of colour lit up by the sunshine. The other thing when going for a walk that I always think is what you should do and I'm not trying to be prescriptive, is to look at stuff. Here, for example, is a, a little tree, I don't know if it's a hawthorn or something, um, looks like it. it's got her thorns on it, but it's been trimmed. You can see in here how it's been trimmed or uh, pollarded, I suppose, even on a, probably with some awful metallic hedge trimmer. But the new shoots, perhaps a year or so now, perhaps the second year, are coming up and they're all going upwards, uh, which is great to see. This um, metal trimming that they do instead of the old way of looking after hedges, it's, it's not really good for the wildlife because just look at the bottom of the hedges. Apart from the gorse down here, there is so little protection for animals. There's a little bit of protection down here. Hopefully when this is in leaf there'll be more, 
but they're uh, quite exposed. On the other side, we've got the gorse here masking us a bit and we can see the rolling countryside which is just beautiful to see. Can't quite yet get away from the roar of the cars which of course with all the roads that we have and all the, especially in the southeast, you never quite get away from it. The sound of the cars bouncing off the hills. Very often these stretches on this route on the South Downs Way for great lengths can be very similar terrain. You know, you've got this quite wide, well-trod path and then you've got just open countryside. So from a filming point of view, it can be quite repetitive. However, it's possible to look down either side here because we're on the highest point of the ridge weaving along and see some interesting landmarks. So that side, I think we have um, looking down onto Brighton and the thing sticking up over there, I believe, is that weird donut thing that they have in Brighton that, that rises up and rises down. And then on the other side, good morning. If I just come over here, we look down and we can see in the far distance there at the bottom, a windmill, another, another restored windmill looking white and resplendent on the countryside. I think that's Kima windmill that in a recent video I did with a chap called Darren Dendy, um, he was going to take me up there, but we had to abort that because of the, the weather. Morning. Morning. A runner there on the, on the path. It's a very popular route. So we're pretty close now, I think, to the actual beacon. come through this gate here that someone's inadvertently and here look at this we have a very beautiful dew pond up here on the top of the South Downs fenced off probably now only available for scientific interest and wildlife but originally would have been a way to feed the animals and I dare say there is a, a name plate just around the corner here. Let's have a look. Oh yes, here we go. Burnt House Pond, it says. If I move the camera this way, there's a rather large cow there. I'm not very keen on cows, so I'm going to gently move away. But he seems quite unperturbed by me, which is great, and also on the other side they look further away because this is a wide angle lens but actually there are more cows grazing in that field and if you look down here oh yeah that's horse hooves not cow hooves that's okay well it's exciting actually because I hadn't realized that although that pond back up there with the cows around it was all closed off for wildlife there is a second one here here it is and this is exclusively for cattle. The great thing about this is it means the farmer hasn't got to pump water up and it's naturally what they would have done for centuries. Make a pond, let it fill with water, um, pat it down with the clay so the water won't disappear and you've, you've got it. And behind me are these wonderful um, <coughs> hawthorn with still with some berries on them and actually I've noticed a number of these hawthorns along here and look at the curve of the hawthorn itself it's, you can see the prevailing south wind is coming up this way like this south I guess that must be southeast and it has bent the branches of the hawthorn it's quite staggering to see how it's moving over that way as indeed others have fascinating to see I don't know if you can see the undulating uh, bumps and lumps here, 
but here particularly just in front of me as I approach the beacon is one it definitely looks like it was once a little bit of tumuli just on the side there the wind is getting up unfortunately now um, which is going to make it difficult to record audio the beacon is just basically on that rise in front of me which is what I'm going to go and get to next I don't know um, if there's a, a Neolithic settlement Bronze Age Iron Age settlement um, that, that was there it would be ridiculous to think that there wasn't there's tumuli evidence of tumuli here that's almost gone that's almost been ploughed away which of course is our heritage and in my mind is sacrilege um, but it's, it's that question of reading the landscape and knowing that these things were there they're not just okay to have them on a map I think you've got to still have them in the landscape whilst you can but these fields are going to be trodden on ploughed on the, the cattle walked on and much of it disappeared so up ahead is my quest just on the ridge of that hill there and as you can see it's very popular now so I'm going to make my way up there but for the sake of this video because of time and everything I'm going to say thanks very much uh, for coming and watching I will it's very windy you see um, I'll do another walk from Ditchling Beacon onwards for another 10 minute walk in another video later on but uh, it's fantastic to see the lovely scenery anyway thanks so much for watching don't forget to follow like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one until then give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon bye for now